past few hours, you've taken hundreds of breaths of air, and you probably had a drink of water or have eaten some food. You may have ridden in a bus or a car to school, and chances are you used electricity to prepare your breakfast, power a computer, or play music. All these things involve the use of natural resources. What are natural resources? What are some of the different types of natural resources? How do we use natural resources? And how can natural resources become threatened? During the next few minutes, we're going to explore these questions and others as we investigate Earth's natural resources. Look around your classroom. Just about everything you see was made from a natural resource. A natural resource is anything we take from the environment and use. It's easy to see how the water in this lake, the fish that live in it, and the trees that surround it are all natural resources. But sometimes it's not as clear. You decide. Are these things produced from natural resources? While you may not think of these things as natural resources, they all came from natural resources. The wooden spoon is made from a tree. The meat in the fried fish came from a once living fish. And the seltzer water was produced from water and carbon dioxide gas. So, as you can see, just about everything that we use and eat comes from a natural resource. The gasoline used to power these snowmobiles and vegetables grown on this farm are examples of different types of natural resources. Typically, we classify natural resources as renewable or non-renewable. Non-renewable natural resources exist in a fixed or set amount and can't be readily replaced by nature. You predict. What will happen to this piece of coal when it's burned? Once it's burned, all that's left are ashes. The coal cannot be replaced, at least not for hundreds of thousands or even millions of years. Once non-renewable resources, such as metals and oil, are used, they're gone forever or for extremely long periods of time. Renewable natural resources, on the other hand, can be replenished by nature in a relatively short amount of time. Examples of renewable natural resources include wind, moving water, energy from the sun, as well as living things such as trees, vegetables, grass, and animals. We just discussed how natural resources can be categorized as either non-renewable or renewable. But there are other ways to categorize or group natural resources. Let's take a look. We breathe at least 12 to 15 times every minute. Breathing fresh, clean air is vital to our healthy existence. Air resources are essential not only to humans, but to all living things on the planet. Water resources, another group of natural resources, are abundant on Earth. In fact, about 70% of Earth's surface is covered with water. Most of this water is found in the form of salt water in the oceans. But many living things need fresh water to survive, and only about 2.8% of the water on Earth is fresh water. That makes it a very precious natural resource. Most people live on land, 
and most of the food we eat, such as fruits and vegetables, grow on land. Land is a very important natural resource. You decide. What's this substance found on the surface of the land? It's dirt, more specifically called soil. Soil is an incredibly important natural resource because most living things on land depend on it in one way or another. Vegetables, trees, worms, and other organisms live in soil. In turn, other organisms eat those things for food. Living things are considered another group of natural resources. Examples of living natural resources include grains, vegetables, trees, and wild game, to name just a few. We all need living resources to survive. Most of the food we eat comes from once living organisms. Plants, an incredibly important living resource, also produce the oxygen we breathe. Energy resources are an additional group of natural resources that are of increasing importance and concern. Energy resources are used to heat and cool homes, power vehicles, and create electricity. If you think about it, you hardly go an hour without using some form of energy. Most of the world's energy needs are provided by non-renewable sources of energy. Examples of non-renewable energy resources include oil, natural gas, and coal. These energy resources are commonly referred to as fossil fuels because they consist of the decayed remains of ancient plants, animals, and other once living things. Fossil fuels will eventually run out. They also damage the environment in a variety of ways. A smaller but increasing percentage of the world's energy use comes from renewable energy sources, which can generate electricity and heat buildings. Examples include moving water or hydropower, wind energy, solar power, that's energy from the sun, and geothermal energy, consisting of heat energy from within the earth. These types of renewable energy resources are becoming increasingly popular and necessary to use because they're cleaner and cause less harm than fossil fuels. Have you ever taken a breath of smoky air or swallowed dirty water? If you've had either of these experiences, you can appreciate the importance of clean natural resources. Pollution is the contamination of natural resources. In some cases, natural resources can become so damaged by pollution that the living things that rely on them are harmed. For example, when the air becomes polluted from the burning of fossil fuels, plants, animals, people, and even the chemistry of Earth's atmosphere can be negatively affected. The contamination of natural resources is a great concern to today's society. You decide. What will happen to this reservoir if the water is used at a faster rate then it can be replenished. That's right, the reservoir will eventually dry up. In this case, the water was overconsumed, meaning too much of it was used. Overconsumption of natural resources can quickly lead to resources becoming scarce. For example, some species of fish in the oceans have become scarce as a result of overfishing.
We've discussed many ways in which natural resources are becoming damaged and overused. If these practices continue, many resources will become depleted or so damaged that they can't be developed. In order for these resources to be available to future generations, more sustainable practices need to be used. Sustainability means not overusing or damaging natural resources so they can continue to be available. Sustainable practices include preventing pollution and overuse, as well as recycling and reusing natural resources. People, organizations, companies, and governments are taking a variety of steps to sustain resources. Many towns and cities have also created free or even mandatory recycling programs. The people of Iceland have reduced their use of non-renewable fossil fuels by relying on geothermal energy to heat their homes. And car manufacturers have reduced the amount of harmful pollutants that cars emit. Some also build cars that use new technology to enable them to partially run on electrical energy. Even though many steps have been taken to sustain resources, the world is a long way from achieving the difficult goal of resource sustainability. However, the Earth's future depends on the sustainable use of natural resources. During the past few minutes, we've discussed Earth's natural resources. We began by defining natural resources as anything from the environment that we use. We explained that all natural resources are either renewable or non-renewable. We explored different types of natural resources, including water, land, and energy. Problems associated with natural resources, such as pollution and overconsumption, were discussed. Finally, we explored different ways to sustain natural resources. So, the next time you go for a ride in the car, or turn on a light, think about some of the things we've discussed. You just might think about Earth's natural resources a little differently. Fill in the correct word to complete the sentence. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one. A natural is anything taken from the environment and used. All right. That was good.